Welcome back, and today we're going to be building a cheap computer, a computer consisting of parts that you can find yourself. It's going to give you some decent bang for the buck, and also we're going to find out how well this Ryzen 7, spoiler alert, 1700 CPU that is 8 years old holds up in 2025. Now for years I've been using Intel, and the reason why is because I just found them to be better bang for the buck. You can get a Dell, Lenovo, HP. You can either cannibalize them and put them into better components or you can case swap them. That's something that I do a lot on the channel. But getting on the marketplace and eBay, those prices have gone up a little more than I'm comfortable for. I mean, think about it. If I'm gonna flip a PC, I don't need to spend, you know, three, four hundred dollars into the bill just to make three to four hundred dollars or even less. And then sometimes you just barely make a little profit. I've had times where I've only made not even a five percent profit, so I'm not sure why the used market is that way right now with the Intel stuff, but I've been finding that the AMD stuff is actually going pretty cheap. Perfect example is this Ryzen 7 1700. It's a $40 CPU, and if you get it on the Facebook Marketplace, you probably can negotiate it for about $20 to $30. Motherboard, memory, storage, and even a cheap graphics card, you can have a decent computer capable of 1080p gaming and not break the bank. So the goal for this one is $250. Let's dive into the system. Let me show you what I got and let's get started. So first things first, anytime you buy used hardware, new hardware, set it up on the motherboard box. It's the best test bench you'll ever have. It comes with the motherboard unless you bought it used, but if you don't have one, just find some type of cardboard box. I'm sure the missus might have an Amazon box or your significant other might have an Amazon box. Just put it on a box, set it up, test the hardware because there's nothing worse than putting a computer together and then it doesn't work and you have to take it apart all over again. A lot easier to diagnose this way but moving on so for the graphics card i have a gtx 980 now yes it is old and eventually nvidia will get rid of the drivers but let's look at this way the rx 580 amd stopped making drivers for it and that card is still running really good years later and i'm still using those for flips this card depending on where you get it facebook marketplace to ebay 40 to 60 dollars pretty good deal four gigs of vram and it works really well for 1080p gaming for our memory the wings this is alloy memory, it's 16 gigs. Um, you can buy any type of memory that you want. 16 gigs, my opinion, is just the new standard and that's where you need to go. Get 16 gigs of DDR4, I think this is 3,000, 3,200 speeds. I don't remember because there's no marking on it and I can't remember what the bio said, but 16 gigs of DDR4, that's about $40. Now for our storage, this is a PNY 500 gig SSD. You can get these for about 20 to $30 used. I think they're going for about $40 new. I'm not 100% sure on the prices on that one, but 500 gig SSD is a great start. It gives you enough room to kind of get your feet wet. And if you need more, you can upgrade later. But at this point, 2025, unless you're running some type of storage or NAS or anything like that, SSD is the way to go. Now for our CPU, we're running the AMD Ryzen 7 1700. And for the cooler, we're just using the stock one that came with it. These coolers, you can get them for about $10. The AMD Ryzen 7 1700, they go for about $40 on the marketplace and or eBay. And if you go on the marketplace, you can get it a lot cheaper. Now for our power supply, this is an RS Game AGW 650 watt. I picked this up for $20 on the Facebook marketplace. Not a bad deal, came with the cables I need. The power supplies, they work great. You could get them new on Amazon for about 40 bucks, but I mean, a used power supply for $20, is it a gamble? It can be, but I mean, I've seen EVGAs, Corsairs, and just better brands go for about 20 to $30. And finally, for the motherboard, this is an MSI A320M. I think it's the V, it's the A320M Pro M2 V2. This is the motherboard that I had that just kind of you know, parts in the garage, but these motherboards, they go for about 40 to $50 on eBay. I have seen on the Facebook marketplace, you could get a CPU motherboard combo for hundred dollars, same thing on eBay. So roughly 200 to $250, but now you're probably saying, well, we need a case, don't we? Yep. You're right. So for the computer case, don't get caught up on the glamor, the RGB and all that type of stuff. You can save a lot of money on the case. Number one, you can use an older one from years ago, or you could get on the Facebook marketplace and find a cheap old one or one that's missing the side panel. I see a lot of those that are missing the side panels. I do scoop them up and I use them for builds. I disclose that with the customer. Hey, it doesn't have the side panel, but for the price that you're able to get them a good gaming PC, they'll take it. This one doesn't have the side panel. It was actually broken before I got it. So this case is 
free for me because I got in the trade-in, but I've seen cases go for about $20 because they don't have that. Sometimes they do have fans, which is a bonus. But like I said, you can save money using an older case, one that's missing a side panel, and then you could take that money and use it to kind of upgrade other parts of your build. So now that we have all our parts, we're roughly into this about a $200 to $250. I'll post the exact numbers on uh, the screen. They're going to be eBay prices. And like I said, if you get on the Facebook marketplace, you can actually find this stuff a lot cheaper. So what I'm going to do now is finish installing uh, all the updates, Steam and all that type of stuff. Pop it in the case. We're going to switch to a montage for this. And then we're going to see how well this Ryzen 7 1700 along with a GTX 980 performs in 2025. So let's get to building. So far, our first game, The Last of Us. 1080p, low settings, and we're probably gonna average about 30 to 40 frames per second. You get dips to the 30s, but for the most part, I'm seeing 30 frames per second. Game looks pretty good, very playable, and you can still have a decent gaming experience. Everyone gets caught up in the whole latest and greatest 1440p and 4K, but 1080p is still good. It's a good experience, and for the price, you can't go wrong. So. Let's move on to our next game. All right, for our next game, Counter-Strike 2, 1080p low settings, and I know you can't see it on the top right corner, but we're averaging about 140, so I would say 100 to 140, so we definitely are way over the 60 frames per second. The game is playing pretty smooth. I'm not good at this game, so I don't know too much, but let's see if we can find some bad guys to kind of, there we go. Yeah, still playable, very good. Like I said, I'm horrible at this game, but once again, 1080p, low settings, 100 frames per second, not too bad. And now for the final game, Fortnite. 1080p, low settings, and our biggest holdback in this computer, and you probably saw it in the last two games, is gonna be our GTX 980, 11-year-old graphics card. So 1080p, low settings is really what's gonna allow us to play decent frames per second. We're averaging about, I would say in a more intense scene, 80 to 90 frames per second. Our GPU is almost hitting 100% load. CPU is only at 50%. So there is meat on the bone to get a better graphics card and upgrade this more later on or just use this to get started and get your feet wet. So for the price, this computer holds up pretty well. I'm happy with it. So let me give you my final thoughts. So as you can see, for two to $250, you can get into gaming and have a decent playable experience. Don't get caught up in the whole 1440p, 4K. Yes, that stuff is nice, it's fantastic. If you're into competitive gaming, obviously you're gonna need all those frames per second, but if you're looking to get your feet wet or just even try this, I mean, for the price, you get in a pretty decent system to get yourself started. Now with everything that you're getting, there is meat on the bones to still upgrade. You're not limited. We could pop in something like an RTX 2060 would be really good for the system, get a Ryzen 7 2700, and that would probably push us closer to the three to $400 range, but still it would hold up pretty well. There are modern titles that we can still play. And even if you can't play most of them, the Steam library is so huge that there are tons of games that you can play. So 
So PC gaming is possible for affordable prices. You just got to go out there, either get on the eBay, Facebook marketplace, and you should be able to find something good. And then on the flip side, if we wanted to, we probably could flip this computer for about $300, throw in a mouse monitor, keyboard, which you can get them cheap anyways, and make a couple of dollars and use this to go on to your next new build. That's typically what I do. So with all that being said, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. What are your opinions on the Ryzen 7 1700 years later, the GTX 980, and anything else different that you would have done to this computer? If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.